Before we get into it there, we just want to remind people that you know, we're supported through Danny Donovan at quickminutes.com. Yeah, Danny's a, a very good friend of both myself and James. He comes from the north side as well and he grew up locally and, <clears throat> you know, he's a, been a massive supporter of the podcast and both myself and James since we actually began and, you know, he's uh, he has his own company called Quick Minutes now and and quickminutes.com is a meeting management application for um, semi-formal and formal meetings. And look, if you want to know more about that, quickminutes.com and supporting Danny, supporting us. Um, so if you're interested in that, check him out and enjoy the rest of the podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Two Norries podcast. I'm your host, James. I'm not joined as always by my good friend, Timmy Long. Hi, everyone. We have a special guest today, Professor Shad Maruna, uh, one of the leading criminologists in the world, based out of Queen's University by way of Shy Town, mm-hmm. the Windy City. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's great to have you here. We've referred to you a lot over the last couple of two and a half years. We had you uh, down shortlisted since day one, but because of COVID, we couldn't do it. So it's great to have you here. Yeah. Sure Brilliant is. to be here. I've been listening for for a long time. I'm a, a huge fan. Uh, I'm a I'm happy to have been bumped by some of the many guests that have uh, jumped yeah. me in the queue. But I, I I'm delighted to finally get here. So yeah. Well, see, you know, when I, I said a few times uh, on the podcast around uh, education for me uh, as being like a personal development tool. Yep. Like I'm learning about to, I'm I'm learning about stuff that helps me in my professional practice and for my academic writing. Mm. But I'm joining the dots in my own life too. Yep. And a, a big part of that was studying criminology in UCC and reading your work and just being able to see myself mm. in the people you've interviewed. Mm, mm, mm. Um, so before we get into that, yeah. just tell us how you got into this. Like you're a psychologist by your trade, aren't you? That's your background. More or less, yeah. yeah. Uh, and how did you end up going into this criminal justice kind of psychology? Yeah, uh, it, it, um, I, I don't have a, a real clear story on that. You know, uh, I, I was a, a developmental uh, psychology was, was was my field, and a lot of developmental psychology is is uh, working with with babies and kids because that's where you're, you're getting these huge, interesting yeah. developmental changes. And and uh, I was uh, a sort of a, a young male in my my twenties and and didn't have kids at the time, so so I wasn't all that interested in kids. Um, but, uh, but I knew uh, something about being a young male and in my twenties. And, and so I, I, I focused on that, uh, adolescent development, but, but more young adult development, those, those transitions from, from adolescence into adulthood. And, uh, um, and of course a big part of that, especially for, for males is, is, Getting through that the the kind of the the um, uh, delinquent phase and the the street phase and and, and these sort of things. So, so uh, I focused on that and uh, uh, turned out I was good at it. You know, I I, I uh, um, uh, must have must have picked something that that struck a, a chord in me, but also in others, and 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 had something to say in it. Uh, and I think some of that was, you know, I was I was the same age as as I was writing about, you know, I was I was a 26, 28 year old mm. writing about 26, 28 year olds. And and uh, I'm not sure that today uh, I'm, I'm a little bit older than that now. And, and I'm not sure I, I would have the same insights, the same ability to to uh, relate and, and, and empathize and, and these kind of things. So so uh, so it was probably, you know, being the right right place at the right time for, for, yeah. for that, that kind of work. You know. Give me your expert opinion on something. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, do you know, Eric Erickson, mm. stage of psychosocial you development. You got it, yeah, yeah. Right? So when I was reading his stage in the adolescence, the identity versus role confusion, exactly. and I was trying to think of myself, and you think of yourself now like this, in, in this stage in your life, you go through crises, right? We're trying to find out who you are mm. and you might take on an identity. I think for me, I took on the identity of a hard man, a criminal, mm. drug user, that what I didn't feel later on it wasn't me, yeah, sure. but it was my identity. And I, f- I didn't shake that until I was about 27, yeah, yeah, yeah. until I went into rehab and got away. But, and then I actually became a man. I was 15 mm-hmm. for 12 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. It, make, it makes perfect sense, you know. And, and that's, a, you know, the, the, uh, um, the, the Erickson th- stages, 
you know, we now no longer see them as, as strictly staged. So, so a, a lot of those those stages overlap, and and you know, people are working on what's it got intimacy, and then the generativity, and these things. People are working on all of those those issues throughout the the, the life course, but but they they come to the fore a bit more at, at different places. But but you're absolutely right. You know, in, in terms of identities. That's a, 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 a really powerful one for a 15 year old, for an 18 year old. It says, you know, I'm not a boy anymore. I, I, I am going to uh, uh, strike out, you know, I want an identity that would be uh, uh, fearsome, that would be, uh, you know, masculine and w- w- would, would make it me make it clear that I'm no longer a child, that I am to be a, a person to be reckoned with. And and that's a, a a perfectly logical adaptation to that awkward transition of, of, of adolescence. The the problem becomes uh, once you you know that that uh, identity gets chosen and, and acted out, uh, it it can become a kind of label, a permanent uh, uh, identity that that is awfully hard to shake. You know, it's like getting a bad tattoo, and, and when you when you're 17, that that you then have to deal with when you're 27 and 37 and, and 57 and so. Forth. Some sometimes sometimes that identity that you you take on board really becomes maybe a mechanism for you to get through whatever environment you're living Absolutely. in. Absolutely. You know, say for example, you're, you're you're living in an area where there's a lot of drug addiction, poverty, violence, you know, you have to take on some form of identity yep. that's going to get you through oh, these yeah. daily struggles sure. that you're going to go through, you know, and without doing that, you probably won't survive. Yeah, yeah. You know, absolutely. so I think that's that's definitely something that we we done as well. Mm-hmm. We took on board whatever we needed unconsciously to get us through those times. You know, and I have a question as well. You, you know, you know, around we, we do take on these identities, yeah. but you know, you know, when a teenager, 13, 14, 15, mm-hmm. when they're using drugs mm-hmm. like cannabis and maybe ecstasy or, or, or benzos or whatever what kind of are they doing more damage again on top of the developmental kind of mm-hmm. uh, the, the, the developmental process on top of everything else mm-hmm. you know what kind of damage are these things doing to them well I, I mean I'm not uh, and it's been a long time since my developmental <laughs> human development degree but but I'm not uh, um, uh, I'm an expert on the the biological, the cognitive. Yeah. You know, you, you have to think the the more chemicals you're introducing in those those key developmental years uh, are are going to be dangerous. Uh, at at the same point, uh, I mean, there's 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 all sorts of chemicals in 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 the atmosphere and chemicals in 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 in, in our foods and, mm-hmm. and 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 drink and so forth that 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 people are you know we're all consuming. So so um, I. I uh, uh, um, wouldn't uh, wouldn't recommend it uh, for for you know especially early childhood. But but then there then again there are are social uh, roles that, that that drugs play that that as you say can be uh, more a- adaptive. Uh, it can can help you uh, um, uh, seem more mature in, in in the eyes of the world. You know the the, the way uh, uh, the, the the drug dealer has a a uh, a status in in communities but even in in society you know we we uh, we, we have whole courses in, in criminology written about these uh, you know the, this role and here it can be played by a 13 year old uh, a 15 year old doing uh, uh you know a a, uh, um, a a a job that that is uh um something that that yeah that is, is is going to be a role that, that they're stuck with in, in life and so forth but 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 anyhow um uh so, so there are are um functional aspects to to drug use uh, in in youth some some interesting work on on young people uh who who never try drugs never never even experiment or or dabble with, with drugs and and there they find that that those uh, youth are, are are often um marginalized they they're um you know maybe they 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 have uh um 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 
uh, neurodiverse conditions. They 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 are they're they're loners. They they don't have the sort of the social uh, adaptation of, of other young people. So so you know I, I mean I I'm I'm not. Uh, not an expert, but uh, as a parent, you know, you sort of want a, a healthy, uh, um, uh, moderate mm-hmm. interaction with with, with uh, substance use, uh, especially in those years where where the, the the person is exploring life and and, and the world and and so forth. So so I I, I guess I. I um, uh, yeah, although obviously there's 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 some tragic consequences that, that yeah. can come, especially the very young introduction to yeah. these things. And yeah. you know, there's a fellow in England, Alex Stevens. Mm-hmm. He writes a lot about drugs Brilliant. and Absolutely. their role and why people take drugs. But mm-hmm. there is the the healing trauma, sure. the corporate yeah. trauma. But there's also it gives you meaning. It gives the illicit economy where you're excluded yeah. from mainstream economy. Yeah. And yeah. he had a kind of a criminology geek term, but subterranean structuration right. is why right. how he describes it. But when he breaks it down, it's not so simple. Yeah, and it's multifaceted. Yeah. yeah. And another thing you were on about as well, you know, um, I think uh, informing your identity. I think the labels that you get as well. So when we're from the area we're from. It's a very stigmatized area mm. and when you're a child and you're going playing sp- team sports in another area you're called all sorts of names mm. because of where you're from yeah but i think that reinforces everything you know mm-hmm. and then you just end up taking on like, yeah i am from here yeah, yeah, yeah. i am going to drive your car or sure. you know yeah but yeah that's when you're living in that kind of area yeah. it's fine yeah. But when you're somebody then that's trying to get away from that life, yeah. not the people. That's when it becomes problematic. Yes. When you mature you know, and yeah, say, yeah. I don't because want this identity things anymore. Things go against you then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things go against you in terms of jobs, mm-hmm. um, education. And your behaviour. Your behaviour, what might have helped you in that context is very counterproductive in this context. Yeah. But we get into the desistance. Will you actually explain what desistance means or what it is? Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, um, desistance is is a terrible academic word. It's it's hard to say, and 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 you know, it, it's um, it, it's unfortunate that that we don't have another an easier word for it. Uh, and and it actually quite telling that that um, that we we had to make up this weird uh, a- academic word uh, um, that that uh, society doesn't already have a word for it. Uh, in, in in a sense, we used to say going straight, uh, yeah. and 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 there was a television program going straight and things. So so that that phrase was was somewhat uh, uh, understandable. Uh, of course, now that has very different connotations to it. Uh, uh, with, with straight as as uh, no longer associated with with with, with crime. So 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 um, there there hasn't been a, a replacement word but but uh, you know i i actually liked going straight because it 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 had a a um you know it's an action term there's the mm. going is the thing and 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 mm. and uh with desistance um sometimes people can think of it as a place oh oh uh, you know have you gotten to desistance yet oh this this person is a desister or so ceased, sort of cease and desist well cease and desist stop Absolutely. immediately as well yeah I yeah so cease and desist says cease stop what you're doing and then desist from doing it again and 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 so you know we are using the word correctly in that um it doesn't really matter about ceasing uh people cease all the time uh with with, with crime it's it's not even like uh addiction where where a person you know wakes up and and starts using quite quite quickly with with with, with crime you know you 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 have uh, some weeks where where you you're you're quite active other weeks where you're not and 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 so so it's always stopping and starting mm. but it's the stopping and staying stopped uh when when you know when stuff piles on when when uh, you're, you're under pressure when somebody's uh, coming at you and all these kind of things uh, that desisting in the face of those obstacles is really interesting. And, it, and it, it's an active process like going straight. It requires, uh, um, you know, it, it, it could be unconscious, but 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 it, it requires effort uh, in order to, to stay out of, you know, it, it, we don't talk about desisting among somebody who's who's dabbled in, 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 in a bit of shoplifting in their youth. You know, now they're in their 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 thirties. You don't say I'm I'm desisting from from shoplifting because it was never an, an entrenched sort of pattern. It wasn't a, a, a serious part of that person's life or identity. 
uh, we we desist from things like like someone who smokes a couple of, uh, of cigarettes. Uh, they don't say they're they're an ex smoker. You know, you, you you need that that sort of uh, habituation, but but also entrenchment in, in into the world for desistance to to make sense. Yeah, yeah. desistance is and the new word that they sure. use. Like I I remember as a child growing up, mm -hmm. you'd have some fucking mad feckers mm -hmm. in the area that were wild. Yeah, and next to all of a sudden, like you could be hearing someone could be talking. Yeah, he's gone straight. He's, yeah, yeah, he's, he's okay. uh, yeah. you know. Yeah, but then the assistants started coming in the last well, few years, mm -hmm. uh, and I often sat sure, down yeah. and I'd say, uh, right, uh, and I put on my my my. my my mind from back then because I didn't even know what assistance mm -hmm. in general sure, meant. Sure. I didn't know the assistance for me. No, I believe the word assistance means is is it to stay away from something? Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm asking this now is because when this does go into the prison mm -hmm. and some of the lads are sitting in their cell yeah, and yeah. they may have learning differences mm -hmm. and they're saying, What's this word assistance? Yeah. You know, it's it's exactly like you just said it, it's going straight. It's going straight in life and keep going and keep yeah. going. Like Coming you, through challenges yeah. and, and moving on again. Yeah. It's a great word. Yeah, going yeah. straight. I like that one. <laughs> you know, but it's like, it's like, you know, if you're uh, abstinent from drugs. Yeah, yeah. Right? And that's that's not recovery not if recovery. you've no access to drugs. Yeah, yeah. But you know, if you're abstinent from drugs, but there's opportunities to use come up and you don't, you don't take them. That's recovery then. Yeah. Right. So if, if you're desisted from crime, let's say um, you're in prison. Sure. Right? Yeah, yeah. You're desisted yeah. then because yeah. you're not committing crime. But when you get out and you have opportunities to commit crime and you don't take them, that's desistance that's then, desistance. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Not just crime free. Uh, you know, that would be the abstinence in, in your parallel. Yeah. But, but, but there's the gap, right? Yeah. That's just the word, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There's the gap. Yeah. How. Do you become this person yeah. that is the assistance? Well, you've interviewed a lot of people. Have, in, have indeed, yes, absolutely, yeah, as, yeah, as have the know? two of you. And yeah, and, yeah and, and I hear very similar things when when I listen to, to some of your episodes. I, you know, I, they sound very like the the, the folks that, that, that I interview all the time. And, and, yeah. and yeah, there, there's, um, so we, we've now, we, we talk about it as a redemption script or, or, or a narrative. The, 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 you know, it's just the certain um elements of the story that you hear so often across across the, the these narratives and 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 you know it, it's not meant to be uh, um a, a, a global universal i i've got um, colleagues who have done a desistant study in japan uh, a desistant study in uh chile and 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 uh, all over the world people ha have have uh, done desistance research and and uh, um there are different cultural um tropes and traditions you know the the the, the one that, that that i found in in, in liverpool in the 90s um, has been replicated, and you can hear echoes of of, of that narrative in lots of different places, including, uh, like I say, in in in, in the Irish uh, folks uh, that, that I talk to. But but um, but it's it, it's not meant to be a a, a kind of a, a you know a, a, a rigid reified theory of this it, it, it's always growing and changing. It, it's very much culturally driven. You know, people. Um, come up with their uh, self narratives, their their understandings of, of, of their their their, you know how they've changed and so forth by drawing on things in the culture. So so uh, now they may be drawing on the the two Norries podcast, you know, uh, because there, there really hasn't been that many models that w w with recovery from from addiction that narrative is out there so so even a a, a teenager might know what uh, you know they wouldn't know the the nuances of, of recovery but but they would have heard of the 12 steps they would have heard of of, of you know uh, that that community and 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 have a sense of oh these these people they go to meetings or something and 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 they 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 talk about these steps and they 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 do these things um, with, with rehabilitation uh, or, or reform or these these other words we have for for desistance, um, people don't have a, a model of what that looks like in in real life, and and so a lot of people doubt it. You know, they 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 say, uh, oh well, this this person's just saying that to get uh, get through parole. They're gonna they're, they'll sing whatever they ha whatever tune they have to sing to get through this or to get a job or whatever, but they really haven't changed because, uh, you know, we don't have those kind of cultural 
role models uh, so much of, of, of this this desistance process. What's the condemnation script uh -huh. and the redemption script? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Those are the two. Yeah. So so in order to understand the redemption script, we we uh, wanted to compare that to to folks who were still involved in 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 in, in criminal so behavior. Is this like in our in our core beliefs of how you perceive yourself and how what, what, how you talk to yourself? Yeah, yeah, essentially. So so we talked about uh, identity and, and, and youth and and um Erickson uh used this uh, phrase a little bit but but later Ericksonian psychologists have have argued that identity is best understand as, as stood as as a person's story of the self so mm -hmm. so it, it you know when when we think of a, our identity sometimes it's I, I'm a Nori. I'm a, I'm a, 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 a an Arsenal fan. I'm a, a whatever you know. It's sort of a list of, of roles. But 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 um, more you know when we ask someone, well, who are you? You tell a story, and and you you say, well, to, to understand who I am, you gotta you gotta know who who my family was, and then then what I was able to do here, and what what traumas I've been through, and then then you know how I turned that around, and these sort of things become our identity, and uh, uh, so so the 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 person who's desisting develops an identity around desistance, and and that story, that redemption script helps them to to stay straight uh, to, to go straight mm. it says because i've got this narrative of of, of who i am uh if i make this choice uh to, you know take that pill or or, or take that road on, on the one hand uh, that's gonna uh, screw up my entire story of of who i am sort of thing so so i'm gonna i'm gonna stick stick with this and and, and likewise the person who's offending although they don't need the same kind of of, of story um, to 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 you know because because their road essentially is, is the easier path. It says better the devil you know. Yeah. Uh, you, why are you offending now? Nobody asks the the the, the twenty five year old who's who's persisting. Why are you persisting? Because you know the the past is the best predictor of the future. They they're just doing what they've always done. Yeah. Uh, it's the sister who needs the strong story. It's like. Nah, 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 I don't believe this. Uh, you haven't really changed. And they don't believe it themselves. So, so they need a really strong story. But, but the condemnation script is, is, is important in its own right, because if we want to, to, um, to promote desistance, we, we, we need to promote these positive stories, but we also have to deconstruct and break down those, those condemnation scripts where, 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 you know, look, nobody's ever going to give me a chance. Everything I ever do, uh, uh, people just turn on me. I, I, you know, the, the, the entire system is against me and these kind of things, which all are, are, you know, defensible arguments that, that, that people make in truth. Yeah. The system has uh, screwed this person over and so forth, but, but they can be broken down and often they're broken down by a single individual, you know, a, 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 a new person in their life, a teacher, a, a probation officer, a, a somebody at Cork Alliance, a shout out to Cork Alliance, somebody yeah. who believes in them and says, I think you're more than you think you are. I think you've got something to offer this world. And, and, and it's only by those kind of reflections that, that the person, you know, the, their narrative of everything being against them uh, can, can break down like. Yeah, yeah, it's fascinating, isn't it? What I think of, you know, I had a prison officer, and she used to she used to say to me like, you know, you have you you're intelligent, James. You mm. could do something with mm. your life, you know. Brilliant. But you don't really believe her, like. Mm. But, but then mm. you're going back to the cell and you're thinking yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, think, yeah. But like, you're beginning there to change from yeah. the condemnation yes. into maybe yes. I am. Do you know? Maybe I'm not a waster. Do you know? For me, one of the biggest, and we're talking about assistance, and um, one of the biggest steps was during my own journey, I kind of needed a lot of people in different areas, a lot of services to get me through, you know, um, because of my struggles, particularly around um, just trying to understand why I worked the way I did yeah. in relation to stuff that would have happened when I was young yeah. and why I had certain core beliefs uh, around myself and um, just dealing with a lot of traumatic experiences, yeah. Yeah. you know. Um, so from the last 10 or 11 years in the recovery period, okay, I would have started down here where I needed and needed and needed a psychotherapist, the Cork Alliance, mm -hmm. I need my wife to understand me, I need a, peop a sponsor, 100%. all these things. But what I have learned in the last two years, 
these people are not needed as any yeah. I won't say any more but not as much yeah. because I've actually I, I actually process stuff today mm. very comfortably when stuff comes up I don't need to be on the phone every two minutes right. talking to somebody telling mm. them how bad my life is mm -hmm. you know I kind of sit with it and for me like that would be that would have been a miracle mm. to even for me to even if you to tell me 10 or 11 years ago to me mm. in 11 years time you won't need anybody to talk about yeah. this stuff yeah. because you'll be able to channel it and feel it yourself and understand it yeah. you know that is a great not just people that are in and mm. um, who have had difficult lives and resisting from that life yeah but in general for Absolutely. anybody Absolutely. it's a great but Going back to our conversation earlier on, mm -hmm. what does it take? What does the assistance take? What kind of steps? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. All the steps are in there from the moment mm -hmm. I stopped drinking right. to the moment we're sitting here right now. Mm -hmm. All the steps, the psychotherapy, mm -hmm. the education, mm -hmm. the meditation, mm -hmm. the personal development groups, the Cork Alliance, mm -hmm. you know, the sponsor. Yeah. Yeah, is that there that is all the, the assistance. Oh, 100 percent. But but, the, the, you know, there is a, a, a subtle shift that happens in, in those narratives where where the, the, the in the redemption script where where the individual goes from from being helped by these organizations to being put in a role of helping others. You know, they, they, they uh, um, talk uh, often as much about help giving as they do about help receiving in the in these narratives and 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 that's really crucial because if, if you're always um focused on the the, the support you're getting from others it's it, it's essential a hundred hundred percent but but then you, you're in a dependent sort of role and it, it it is that you know the best help you can get is often the uh, others showing trust in you that that you can uh you know be a be a father be a, a, a the the therapist for others uh w w which is, is of course the the wounded healer yeah. sort of notion that that that, that works uh so, so uh, intrinsically into the therapy process um you can be the the um the, you know the, the the podcaster the 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 role model uh and and that's uh, uh you know often forgotten by by uh, social workers, uh, which, which I have an enormous amount of time for, by by you know those in the rehabilitation trade, we often sort of stop with the the, the we we give the help uh, and and forget that that we've got to get people into the uh, the empowered position of, of being help givers themselves. Yeah, uh, you mentioned the uh, good uh, term there, the wounded healer. Uh, uh. So myself and Timmy, obviously. We, we try to help people where we can and we know a lot of people that's in our position that are in, either in the caring profession or else in a different profession but look for, look to help people outside of the work yeah. is that common for people why do people feel a draw to go back and give back to people yeah i mean there, we, we in, in my book there, I, I sort of give a list of, of reasons and i don't know if i'll be able to the book was 22 years old so i may making, not be able making to, good making good yeah, yeah. Piece, yeah and no longer available unfortunately in print but but we're, we're trying to get it back into print uh but it's that old and, and it shows how old i must be but uh, it's it's got a uh a list of, of the sort of the various things that um, um that we we call it generativity uh, out, out of that ericsson uh, tradition that that no notion of, of you know sometimes people talk about it as giving back, uh, but but it, it, it it's uh, and, and there is a role for that and 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 one of the five uh, which which I won't be able to recreate here without my powerpoints. Uh, <laughs> one of the those the, the the five on the list is a, a real important uh, a reparative function. You know the the the, the person who's uh, uh, justice involved has uh, um, um, taken from the, the community in, in, in various ways and, and, and does have a debt uh, of sorts in the community's eyes and, and, and otherwise that, that um, these kind of, you know, there's one thing to, to straighten one's hand and it says, uh, look, I'm not doing that stuff that I used to do. Now I'm, uh, I'm working uh, for this call center now. And, 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 and uh, um, it, it's all legit work to the extent that the, the, the call center is, is, is doing legit uh, um, phone calling and, and, and so forth. So, so uh, um, that's okay, but it, it, it's not as powerful a message as, look, yeah, I did a lot of bad things then, 
but now I'm helping your nephew uh, turn turn his life around. I'm I'm out there working uh, in the community to try to make sure that other people don't make the mistakes I did. And that's a, a much more uh, you know balancing of the scales type type um, narrative than 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 other types of work. So so I think that's one of the reasons. But 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 there's an, a number you know another one um, people who have been. Uh, it had long histories of, of crime and addiction and, and, and spent time in prison often, uh, you know, are at a disadvantage in lots of other careers and professions. They're, they're, they're 10 years behind their, 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 their cohort, if nothing else, but often they come out with limited skills. A lot of the skills that are available in prisons and things aren't up to date. They're not a uh, job, uh, uh, worthy and, 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 and so forth. So, so, um, it, 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 the, the, the individual is, you know, kind of starts at the very bottom if, if they want to become a, a, uh, you know, a, a contractor or whatever, but if they want to become a, 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 a counselor, uh, working in, in the justice system, they actually find they've got an enormous amount of, of, of lived experience of expertise by experience of, of, of hard earned wisdom that, that, uh, you know, doesn't just put them at the bottom of, of a pool, but, but gives them, you know, uh, almost super superpowers when it comes to helping others that, that they've got, uh, you know, a, a, a genuine, uh, gift in the, 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 the misfortunes that they've been through and, and almost the worst they, they have been through the, the stronger that, yeah. that gift. So, so, so there's, there's, there's some logic there and, and, and pursuing it. So, so there's a lot of good reasons to, that, that we see that. And yes, you, you, you see it a great deal. You, you, you see it in the addiction yeah. recovery world. Uh, but, but, but you definitely see it with desistance as well. Yeah. Cause like, um, we're going into prison. Uh, we're going into every prison in Ireland over mental health week, which is the last week of February, first week of March. Okay. And uh, but the psychology service in there, um, they just feel that they respond better to people that have that lived 100%. experience, yeah, that yeah. they can identify with. So uh, it's really valuable. Yeah. And if you're in prison at the moment, um, like all that shit that you've been through and what you think is a real negative, you can actually turn that into a positive. Turn it into a positive. And 100%. you and and it'll actually improve your employability in certain sectors. You know. Yeah. Do you see how long it has actually taken for for let's just say the prison systems and mm. not just this country and every other country to understand the importance yeah. of the lived experience. Yeah. Like it, it, all you have to do really is look at the AA model. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Right. Like al alcoholics could never, ever get us back in the right. day. Yeah. Then alcoholics non us became something that people could go to. And th the answer was there. People who can relate to other people yeah. will stop. Yeah. Yeah. Because they'll feel that they're not on their own and they'll see these other people who have a bit of time behind them mm. in the recovery period, away from alcohol, drugs, whatever it may be, even in mental health issues. That's yeah. a big deal as well, yeah. you know, and and that gives them a massive amount of hope. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. And you have to give people hope, particularly people that are locked up inside themselves, yeah. you know, in prisons. Yep. Yeah. You have to give them hope. You, you know what hope stands for? No. Uh, I can't believe I know something. Well, I know what it stands for for me. <laughs> no, no, but it's an acronym. On my own personal, it's, personal journey. It's an acronym. H-O-P-E. Yeah. This is, I, I learned this from uh, um, uh, Gethin uh, Jones, uh, but but Gethin learned it from uh, a prisoner serving a life term. He says, hope is hearing other people's experiences. And, and, and oh, you know, so, so hope is the two norries. And, 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 yeah. You know what, no, Shad? Mm -hmm. right? Do you know what you just said? Mm -hmm. That's going to go on a two Nori's t-shirt. There you go. There yeah. you go. Yeah. And I mean yeah. that. Yeah. That's what's yeah. going yeah. on. We're looking for yeah. slogans for all yeah. that. Great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hearing <laughs> other people's What's experience. Once yeah. you don't go looking for royalties down the line. <laughs> <laughs> The other one I love is is a guy, and this was in the states, but but you might have heard this one too because it's probably a, a twelve step. Uh, he says, um, "How do you get through a minefield? The only way to get through a minefield is to to, to follow the fella in front of you, and if he gets through alive, then then you walk in his, his yeah. footsteps." And, oh, yeah. and and again, it's just like. You know, you we wouldn't expect people to become a dentist without meeting other dentists and learning from those dentists. We wouldn't mm -hmm. expect them to become a criminologist without yeah. meeting other criminologists and, and modeling what we do. We expect people to desist uh, on their own because, you, you know, uh, uh, we, we can't bring ex-prisoners into the prisons. That would be, you know, contaminating.
contamination. We can't have people associating with other ex-prisoners. That would be contamination. Well, how are they going to find models uh, if, if we're not allowing them, yeah. not facilitating that that kind of, so yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Do you know, in, in recovery as well, there's 12 steps. There's like a, def, like there's a program and we don't have that in the systems, but there is a term in the assistance literature called hooks for change. Right. And when I think about it can be different for everybody. Mm -hmm. So you can't like give a assistance 12 steps because it's going to be different for everybody. Yeah. yeah. But for myself and Timmy, education and yep. relationships has been a good hook, has been a real hook for change. Can you explain the term and maybe sure. give some examples of maybe for people that's in prison at the moment, mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. how they can actually, what they can use to turn their lives around or something that they can hook onto? Yeah, yeah. So uh, Hooks for Change is, is Peggy Giordano. She's she's a, a, a legend in, in desistance research and, 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 and that that's her, her phrase, I, I'm fairly sure. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, education is is a great example of that and and i was i was very pleased in cork uh in, in in one of the classrooms or just outside of the classroom in cork prison uh they had a victor hugo quote uh um uh, he who opens and it could be he or she he who opens a prison uh closes no 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 take it back he who opens a school closes a prison and mm -hmm. and and uh um you know the the uh, the sentiment is exactly right. In truth, a lot of schools feel like prisons. A lot of schools uh, are, are demeaning and stigmatizing and, and uh, places where young people want to get away from. So, so you have to understand it, it, it more in terms of the way you describe it as education. And, and, and you know, I, as an educator, I, I, I'd like to th think of education as, as, you know, an opening of people's horizons. Uh, uh, both they're, they're kind of opportunities it says you know get this degree and and it'll open up job opportunities for you but much more i'd like to open up minds and 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 free people of of, of you know they you see the world in in one way then then you read uh you know foucault or or or, or you read uh, uh um the the work of angela davis and and it opens your mind to to new things and new thoughts and 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 you know the prison is is, is a kind of closing uh it, it, it it's uh, um you know a, a shutting down of opportunities for sure uh but also a sh shutting down of possibilities and and you start to limit your horizons and say actually you know uh uh, uh uh, I'm never going to make it uh, doing X, Y, or Z, and 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 th this is really the only hope for me, and so forth. So, so in lots of ways, education is kind of the opposite of of, of that condemnation script. It, and, and and so I, I I think it's a good one in terms of uh, hopes for change, and it could be you know it doesn't have to be traditional it could be marriage. Or it could be oh, relationships are, are another or, absolutely or, huge one. Yeah, or, yeah. Yeah, like you don't have to be like. Uh, a worker, you could no. actually go and pursue an interest in gardening, of course, and be on your disability allowance. Yeah. But you yeah. found something yeah. to live for. Yeah, yeah. No, and, and and you know some of the arts and and, and you see in, in in Cork Prison are are unbelievable, and yeah. some some of that talent and and it's talent that, that people don't realize they have, but also interest that, that, that they didn't realize they have until they're they're in a cell and 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 they they they. Uh, Isn't it sad know. though that mm, sometimes really yeah. people go to prison to fulfill their potential, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or to realize a talent? Sure, sure. Know, no, I would sad. never. Uh, if there's judges listening, I would never send somebody to prison in the hope that that yes, they 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 find themselves or yeah. sitting in the contemplation. You know, none none of none of that works. People make the best of, of, of a terrible situation in, in prison, and amazing things come out of, of prison. But but that's not the majority uh, yeah. experience, as you say. For most people, imprisonment uh, shuts down po possibilities, and 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 you know we 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 see that uh, both you know in, in the lives of inside prison, but as they come out, and and it brings you know the prison into the community in these these negative ways. So so yeah, I'm not advocating it, but yeah. but uh, but it is amazing what what people can do uh, uh, um, with 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 themselves in that have any situation. Have you any opinions on uh, victims? of crime and maybe their objection yeah. to this kind of field of research and why we put supports around people right. who commit crime like why why should we care about people who commit crime yeah yeah no it's great great uh, point um it is one that one has to think about in doing this work it it, it always comes up you know the the the, the one answer that 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 sounds flippant but is actually much deeper than than it sounds is, is that 
um, this, uh, the, this, this binary between victims and offenders uh, is, is an artificial one. And, and we know that the people we call offenders uh, have been victimized almost more than anybody. And, and yeah. you know, you think about what, what we fear uh, with, with, with victimization. Oh, you know, if, if this, this person, it, it has ruined their life uh, by being victimized. They're, they're going to be broken. They're going to be angry. They're going to be, well, maybe do it to someone else, you know, whatever has been done to them. Uh, and and, and uh, so, so we, we kind of understand that, 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 that victimization and offending are, are linked in these ways. And, and this is why, the, 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 you know, there, there's a lot of problems with this research on, on ACEs yeah. and trauma, uh, ACEs being uh, 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 childhood uh, yeah. Ad- adverse, childhood, experience. childhood experiences. Yeah. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, and... Um, there's a lot of problems with that, but I, I, I think it's it's outstanding in, in that framing, um, you know, not in the kind of risk factor, oh, that somebody who comes from a broken home is, is a higher risk of offending, but it says, no, that, that, that somebody who, who's, uh, um, uh, you know, experienced all of this trauma is, is, is most likely and statistically they've demonstrated this in, in incredible ways, uh, are, are the most at risk for, for, for uh, getting involved with drugs, uh, getting involved with crime and, 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 and these kind of things. And it, and it changes our, our perceptions to, to recognize that, that these, these offenders are, are, are so-called, uh, in, if you're on podcast, you can't hear my air quotes, but, but, uh, the, the people we call offenders are, are um, um, themselves victimized in, in all sorts of ways. It's like yeah. the saying goes, um, I heard this a while back and it made so much sense to me, you know, in relation to my own experiences mm. growing up as well. It, it's like this it, hurt people, yeah. hurt people. It's a great phrase. And my, my understanding of that was simply this, okay, because of my own upbringing and this different things that did happen to me mm. Mm. and the way I was treated, Okay, yeah. I actually thought people were just bad, and yeah, everybody yeah. just wanted to hurt me. Yep. yep. So I was uh, m- my mechanism that was built up from from this was hurt them before they can hurt you. True. Sure. And keep them at arm's length, and mm-hmm. don't leave them in because mm-hmm. they will hurt you. You bet. Yeah. You know, and it wasn't until like you know it was one of the biggest things for me ever ever. In, in my life was trust. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I could not trust anybody. Yeah. Leaving yeah. yourself vulnerable. You know, you know and sure. it wasn't until I kept going back to therapy, talking about this trust, and it, my therapist was saying, you have to trust to me. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to trust. You have to give people trust. I, I, unconsciously, I, I'd say it in, in the room. I'd say, yeah, yeah, I understand. But unconsciously, like trust, you could use trust in your vocabulary, yeah, I will trust, but there's more to just saying trust. Mm. There's a feeling, and that's a big word as well. Vulnerability yeah. is a massive word you know, in Gabo, any form of recovery. Gabo mm. Mate talks in his book, mm. The Myth of Normal, the new book that he sent yeah. us. He sent us his book, which Fabulous. was pretty cool. Fabulous. He talks about, like, in nature, like, things don't grow unless they're in a state of vulnerability. Like the caterpillar has to break out of the cocoon to become a butterfly. The shoot has to come out of the seed to grow into a tree. And for humans to grow, like what you're talking about there, it's one thing saying, I trust you, but leaving yourself vulnerable, leaving them, trusting them in a way that they could hurt you, but you're going to leave yourself vulnerable. And when they don't, then then that's where the growth comes, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. And, and you're out in the meeting and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and like, you're so, you're so right. It's, it's, it, like, it wasn't until I stopped the fighting, mm-hmm. everybody, everything up here f- stopped it mm-hmm. and just sat one day and just said, I can't do this no more. Mm-hmm. I can't keep fighting. Yeah. Yep. And I allowed myself in situations to be vulnerable mm-hmm as well around my children mm-hmm, mm-hmm. around my wife mm-hmm. around people that i i i would have been in in, in involved in drugs and and criminality years ago i allowed myself to be vulnerable around these and the healing that i got from it you know it, it was it was like yeah. you know and it, and you know what it felt like it felt like i was going back in time to that child that innocent child mm where he was completely vulnerable, you know, and untouched and, and completely innocent and things happened to him. 
to change the way he had to get through yeah. and live in this world mm. and these things and and it wasn't by conscious choice that I made these decisions as a young child completely mm. shut off from of from humanity yeah, I had to survive in some way yeah. and, and and in that way I had to completely shut off mm. from here mm. from my neck down mm -hmm. to be able to survive yeah. but when you do that you become introverted in your head sure. and you question everybody every decision everything in life mm -hmm. you question yourself if you don't understand yourself and i went through my whole life then struggling with sexuality struggling mm -hmm. with rel relationships mm -hmm. with friends yeah. you know in school even at home mm -hmm. you know um and and like nobody that i hurt afterwards in, in which is com completely there's no justification for it and of i just course, want to say that course, yeah. nobody they just seen the hurt I was doing to everybody. Yeah. Nobody really saw why are the reasons I yeah. was doing it. It was unconscious. Yeah. I was unconscious most of the time doing these hurts. Yeah. You know, it was just I didn't understand yeah. these things. I, I had these kind of beliefs. Mm -hmm. You know, um but the, I, no, the, that was important. Sure, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know the, the vulnerability you talk about as well. It, it helps it helped me i think move away from the condemnation mm -hmm. script that like mm -hmm. i can't say nothing you know if i'm in a treatment center or a mm -hmm. na room mm -hmm. recovery room which are great because this is where you get the pair to pair stuff for free and it uh, comes to me and i don't say anything because i think if i say this now they're going to judge me they're going to think i'm stupid or i'm a mm -hmm. terrible man or i'm a pussy or whatever mm -hmm. and then one day you open your mouth and you get positive feedback you say you know then you begin to change the script from maybe I'm not yeah. fuck stupid. Yeah, yeah. Maybe there is something good in me. Maybe I'm not mad. Mm -hmm. All these people can relate me. And I know he's not mad, mm -hmm. but he had the same experience. You're changing the script. Totally right. Your entire yeah. script. And slowly you begin to move away from that. I, I've no relationship, or I've no like, uh, with the old, the old James, it's like a different person. Yeah, yeah. sure, sure. Because yeah. I'm a different I man. I can understand it. Yeah, 100%. It's, yeah, yeah. it's just, this, yeah. it's just like, this is me here, mm -hmm. this is me now, and this was me before. Yeah. And it's like, when stuff comes up from before, you know, stuff that I've, I've just fear around and shame. Or if you're guilt. reminded of something like, you did, yeah, yeah. it's horrible. Oh my God. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, I'm feeling that person's pain, yeah, yeah. their actions, you mm -hmm. know, today, mm -hmm. whereas I'm not the same person who would behave in this way or do these things. Yeah. You yeah, know, and really. I but I'm left with that trapped in my body here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that stuff is connected to memories. Mm -hmm. You know, and the thought might bring up that memory mm -hmm. and from the, the memory then I'm left with the feeling. Yeah. The emotion. Yeah, yeah. And that emotion will stay there mm -hmm. if you're not so if you're not able to process it right. and sit with it. Because your head will start going, mm -hmm. and then there's a small snowball effect. That reliving is then, you know, and it's just sure. going and yeah. going, and then there's a battle in your head, mm -hmm. right or wrong. This person here, no, who's conscious, no, who mm -hmm. never do that, is mm -hmm. fighting that person back then. Yeah, yeah, it's like hundred percent. What the fuck is going on here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then you get caught up in that I know. Mm -hmm. for hours, for days, <laughs> for weeks. Yeah, you know, and we are, mm -hmm. like as human beings. We're not educated around that stuff no. where we could save ourselves so much pain if we understood it and had awareness around it, how the, how the biology of the thoughts mm. and the emotions work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we got all the way there from talking about the victims, but yeah. to, bring, to bring it back to the <laughs> yeah. victims, it's like, okay. if, if we, like, what do we all want at this table? We want people to stop committing crime yeah. so that there's less victims in the sure. future. Yeah, yeah. But you can't go into prison and say, you better stop committing crime. Society has to play a role in providing supports so that the assistance, like Timmy said, they start out with all these supports, so then over time they don't need them. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it's unrealistic uh, to think that people are just going to come out of prison and they'll never again. The, the assistance needs to be facilitated by society yeah. and there'll be less victims down the line. That's why we're doing what we're doing, isn't sure. it? Sure, yeah. Yeah, the, I mean, the worst, um, you know, one way for victims to, to, to recover, to, to um, and, and recovery is too, too strong a word, but, but for them to cope with what's happened to them, uh, the easiest Band-Aid that they can put on 
is to kind of monsterize the person uh, the, 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 the defendant. And, and that is to say, you know, and, and it's hu totally human nature. We, we, we all do this. You know, somebody cuts you off in traffic and Jesus, that, that guy, you know, is a psychopath, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, and, and, and that's, <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> that's what we do as a society that, that, uh, you know, uh, um, it, it, you can often feel when when, when I get questions, uh, and, and 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 not usually from people who are the most serious victims, but 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 people who have been uh, um, uh, haunted by crime in the way that that, that all of us are in, in, in modern society. That that you know they, they they will say you know I don't want to be made to feel empathy for for these people. The, you know they, they they are scum. They 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 are monsters. Uh, uh, and and. Uh, I don't have enough. Uh, I've got enough empathy for all the other uh, causes in the world. I'm not going to join you on on your cause. And 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 uh, it, it's a, it's a dangerous. It, it totally makes sense. And I understand how they are are um, you know what they're doing to, to to cope because you know if they see the person uh, uh, in the way that, that you described so 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 beautifully as as uh, you know as, as as the hurt child that, that that is coping and is putting on this monster image you know and and maybe playing up to the 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 uh, uh, the, the the psychopath mask of I don't have any emotions and I and I and I, and I don't feel anything for for society and and, and so and so forth and um, if they understood that that this was uh, itself a coping mechanism and, and these kind of things it it makes them realize that that well if that's a human being that did these things then i could do these things and maybe i do do these things and and you know and and when people don't want to look at their own culpability and their own potentiality for for i mean we we're, we're living in a you know, in, in, in a society that, that that's basically uh, yeah. going to make itself extinct here with it, with our greed and our and our yeah. uh, um, carelessness and callousness uh, for for our, our fellow hu humans, and, and uh, so we all have a lot of shame that we're 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 trying to project and 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 to deny in ourselves, and and we sometimes project that onto other groups so immigrant groups is the latest uh, you know it's it's these people that are coming in uh, what what have you that are causing all these problems and 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 that's the kind of uh, um, I think it's it's a very dangerous narrative because it, it's it, it's in fact it, it's the the once you otherize once you demean others and and make them less than human it's when it allows us to do inhuman things to them and and, and sometimes our justice system is is, is guilty of that certainly like, in the like, United um, States and elsewhere. I don't know the uh, American psychologist Gordon Allport. Oh sure, yeah, yeah. on the stages of prejudice, yeah, the stats yes, of, yes, as how you speak about people and right. excluding them, yeah. can lead to violence yeah and we've seen it with donald trump's rhetoric they're not sure. just idle words sure they're not it's laying yeah. the foundation for the violence that happened mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. capitol building you know down the line yeah so that's why the protests against immigration like that's paving the way for there was an attack on a homeless camp in dublin you know mm -hmm. they went in mm -hmm. with hurleys and bats on top of people sleeping in tents mm -hmm. you know because they were different color skin and stuff right. like that so it's the language used on social media it paves the way for the violence down the line yeah but um been a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, I, I, I've been waiting for a long time. Covered a lot of ground there. We surely did. We <laughs> yeah, surely yeah, did. Yeah, 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 pleasure yeah. talking to you. And I'm sure people uh, found it uh, interesting. Well, I definitely did anyway. So thank you. Thank no you so much for joining us today.